Just want to make mention that this question does carry on. Okay, so this is 5.1 to 5.3, and then it does carry on on the next slide. So here we have graphs F and G. So F is a hyperbola, and G is a straight line. Points A, B, blah, 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 the two graphs, blah, blah, blah. Line B is parallel. Okay, that's fine. First question for two marks. Sorry, I got the marks a bit. They're not aligned up perfectly, but... You guys know what I'm trying to say there. Okay, so we need to try to figure out the equation uh, of this straight line because they want the value of A and Q. Now, a straight line is easy, right? Because you just need two points. So there we have it. So we know that a straight line is Y is equal to MX plus C. So we need to go get M. Now, M is the slope or the gradient, which uses this formula over here. And so it doesn't really matter which one is point number two and which one's point number one, but I'll do it like that. And so we're gonna say four minus, then this is already a minus four, so we just say minus four again. And then at the bottom we have three minus, and then this is a minus one, so we put a minus one. And if you had to work this out, you're gonna end up with eight over four, which is two. So we have the slope of the line, which is two. To now find C, you have to plug in a point on the line. You can choose whichever one you like. I'm gonna go with B. So the Y value is a four, and the X value is a three, and then we can solve for C. So this would be four equals to six plus C, so C is equal to four minus six, which is negative two. So the equation of that line would then be G of X is equal to two X minus two. So we can see that A is two and Q is negative two, like that. Okay, so we've got that one correct. Determine the values of X for which these two are equal to each other. Okay, so you just make them equal to each other. So you say one over X minus one equals to the equation of, um, by the way, guys, let's say you were in the test, okay, or in the exam, and you're feeling anxious and nervous, and you just couldn't get question 5.1 correct. You just couldn't get it. Don't let that stop you from carrying on, because now you could carry on to 5.2, and you could just go full in A and Q, and then you can just pretend like you found the equation, and then you can carry on. So you don't have to just abandon the entire question now. Okay, sometimes what happens is that you carry on, and then you're feeling a bit calm, more calm, and then you can go back and do 5.1, and you'll be like, oh, easy. Okay, so we know that A is two, and we know that Q is minus two. There we go. So this is now an equation that has a fraction. There we go. So we do need a common denominator. Now that common denominator is just going to be, um, well, let's first put all of these over one. That common denominator would be X. Yeah, so let's go multiply and get everything correct there, or get all the same denominators. So we would have to multiply this by x, and what you do to the bottom, you do to the top. You'd have to multiply this by x, what you do to the bottom, you do to the top. And you'd have to multiply this by x, what you do to the bottom, you do to the top. This one, we don't have to do anything because it already has the common denominator. Right, so that's gonna give us one over x minus x over x equals to two x squared over x minus two x over x. Now remember, when you have an equation and the denominators are the same, you can ignore the denominators. Okay, so let's get rid of those. And so there we have it. This is now a quadratic equation because it has the x squared. So we take everything to the one side. You don't wanna take the x's to the one side and the numbers to the other side. You only do that if it's a linear equation that doesn't have this x squared. Okay, so we take everything to the one side. So that'll become a plus x and then a minus one. And then if we just simplify a little bit further, minus two x plus x is just minus x. And now we need to factorize that one. Okay, so you can try factorize that one however you are comfortable with, but I'm gonna just carry on over here. So I'm gonna make my two brackets. We're gonna have a two X and a X and a one and a one. And then you might need to just pause and try to think about how this is gonna work. But this one here would be a negative and this one would have to be a positive. And so then what we can say is therefore, two X plus one must be equal to zero or x minus one must be equal to zero. And so if you solve, you would say that x is equal to negative a half, or x would be equal to one. So that means that's where the two graphs intersect. So they intersect 
here at C, okay? So that would have to be, uh, that would be the negative half. And then, and then the with the intersect here, that would be where x is equal to one. Now, sometimes we would have to go find the y values, but they just said determine the values of x. Okay, so we can say it's when x is one or when x is negative a half. The next question says, for what values of x is the graph of g bigger than the graph of f? Okay, so let me just try explain what does this actually mean in like normal people's language um, because this maths language can sometimes be so weird. Okay, so what it means is um, where is the graph g above graph f? That's what we're saying. Where is graph g? above graph f. So g is above f, let's have a look. So it would be here, because you can see that graph g is above graph f, where graph f is over there. See that, so you can see the yellow is above the red at that point. There is another area, and that is over here, just up to this point here, see there? Um, you can see that that straight line is above the red the, the, the graph F, which is over there. See, so you're looking for all the areas where the yellow graph is above the red graph. Okay, so that's where the answer would be. Now we have to go and explain that. All right, so I'm gonna start with this little area here. So it will be from this point where they intersect, which we said earlier was x equals to one. So it's all of this area, so it's where x is bigger than one. So we can say where x is bigger than or equal to actually, because they said, bigger than or equal to. So we can say, I'll show you the bracket method as well. So x is bigger than or equal to one, or where else? Oh, it's this little piece here. So it's when x is between, when x is between, uh, we said this was negative a half, remember? We got that earlier, x was negative a half, oh, and equal to, and then smaller than this x value, which is the y axis, which is zero, but don't include the zero, why? Because the zero is the asymptote of the hyperbola. Remember your asymptote of a hyperbola runs over there? So you don't wanna include that. We're never allowed to include the asymptote. That's the answer. Now, if you prefer the bracket method, you could say x is an element from one up to infinity, or, from, oh, that's a square bracket, from negative a half up to zero, like that. Calculate the length of BE. Okay, so whenever they give you these questions like this where they've got the one graph, um, they've got the one graph above and the one graph below, they sometimes like to ask you the vertical length. Now, that length, you must just remember, is always gonna be the Y value of the top graph minus the y value of the bottom graph. I'll explain what that means. Let's say this y value here, or let's say we have, um, let's say we have two graphs. We have a straight line and we have some type of parabola. And let's say that they want this, um, they want this vertical length over here, for example. Now let's say this uh, value here is one and three, and this value here is one and one then that vertical length would have a distance of two. Why? Because it's going from three down to one. So it would have a vertical length of two. So you minus them, okay. What's important to understand is that the x value at B and the x value at E is the same. So the x value of B is the same as the x value of E. How do I know that? Because it's going right down. Some of you might say, yeah, but how do you know it's going down? What if it's going a little bit to the side? Well, that is why they said that line BE is parallel to the y-axis. That means that it goes straight down because it's parallel to the y-axis. Uh -huh. So we know then that the x value of E is three, but we don't know what its y value is. So that's easy to find because if you know the x value, you can just plug it into this equation to find the y value. So you plug in the x value of three, okay, and then that'll help you to find the y value. And if you do that, you'd get negative two over three. So we know now that this coordinate is three and negative two over three. So now the fi to find the length of BE, you just take the y value of the top one, which is four, 
minus the y value of the bottom one, which is now negative 2 over 3. And so you're going to end up saying 4 plus 2 over 3. And um, you could write the answer as 4 and 2 thirds. Or you could even write it as, um, what is that, 14 over 3. It's up to you. Next one, write down an equation of h if h is the same as f, but then you just plus 3. Oh, that's a nice easy one, guys. That's why it's only worth one mark. Um, they're literally saying that h is the same as f and then just plus 3. So what we can do is we can then just say that h is the same as f. So that's just that one. And then just plus 3. So that means that h is 1 over x and then plus 2. See that? So you're just adding 3 um, onto the end. And so minus 1 plus 3 is plus 2. And so that would be the final answer over there.